these randoms keep getting jobs. Don't worry about it. I'm going to say, I can't wait to say it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Not Bland Show, and I'm your host, Dujanae Bland. And today we have a really good show ahead. We're going to talk some pro stock motorcycle with Richard Gaston, and then we're going to talk some WrestleMania, as it is WrestleMania week. Uh, looks to be one of the biggest WrestleManias that has uh, been in a long time. So I'm looking forward to it. And without further ado, we're going to bring on the man who is with Vance and Hines. Uh, he is the second bike. They call it, they still call it Eddie's bike, I think. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, I, I still call it Eddie's bike. And uh, I made a deal until I win my first race, it's Eddie's bike. I got to I gotta kind of uh, mark my territory with it. And uh, we don't do that until I win the first race. That's not bad. That's not <laughs> bad. Uh, you came out in Gainesville, which, um, I mean, your partner, <laughs> Gage, just... <laughs> killed it but do you feel like you made some really clean runs uh you guys um in that uh e1 was a uh, 672.4 at 201.97 um you feel like you're starting to get a grasp of the bike because i know one, no one no two bikes are the same right Absolutely. so um you feel like you guys are starting to make some progress to where uh, your bike is starting to get up and get close to where Gage is. You know that's 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 a really good question. The uh, and and I've I've had to answer different versions of that probably a hundred times. People are like, "Well, why is his bike so fast, and why is yours not? Why are you a tenth behind him?" And da da da. But the truth is, no two bikes are the same. Our chassis are actually different. They're not even built the same. Gage is actually on the oldest bike in the stable. Uh, Gage has a, com a completely different uh, chassis, um, you know, with the intent of making them as close to possible right. as you can. But they are slightly different. But uh, anyway, even if they were identical, they would be different. Um, the riders are different. Um, just there's a lot of different variables. And uh, and that's one of the things that uh, that honestly, if I can be honest, was a kind of a hard pill to swallow at the first race is, uh, you know, I didn't do the best job riding and I'm not going to be too hard on myself. I. Uh, I haven't ridden much in the last two years, and, uh, you know, I still got to get comfortable. We didn't get any testing. We went there with the in intent to test on Wednesday, and um, we didn't get to. So my first pass was Q1. Um, so, you know, to, to really put it, it's funny. I was making a post today about my personal best being 672, and the narrative is easy to say, why is yours not as fast as his? But let's think about that for a second, right? I went 672 at 201.97, almost 202. There's a lot of people in the field who have been racing and doing this for a long time who would die to go 672. I mean, that's a big number. You know, that's, yes, that's not yes. like slow. So when you put it in perspective and the fact that my first event on this motorcycle, I've already been a 72 at almost basically, we'll call it 202. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty wild. That's pretty crazy. And I'll take it, man. Gage is in another league right now. And uh, that's for a number of different reasons, man. Andrew and Gage are just like literally the perfect combination. And me and Eddie, you know, we all work together, but me and Eddie, uh, we'll, we'll get close. We'll get there. And that is everybody on the team's number one goal is to get me, Kelly, and Ellie to get us all close together at this next race. Yeah, um, it, that seemed to be the topic of discussion with um, it not not having that testing. I know uh kelly talked about it you know that's a brand new bike for her um and then ellie didn't didn't have that opportunity yeah. uh, and you know gage is basically coming in on this i'm sure that's the same bike that he won the championship with so it, it's already locked and loaded and ready and it's just a matter of putting it together so everybody else is 
is trying to play catch up. And I even look at the field that way as well. Uh, we saw Angie Smith run uh, in the 670s as well. And it's just a matter six, six. of. She went 69. Right. There yeah. you go. 69, and which I thought was very close. Very oh, yeah. close. Um, and then Gage went out and did what he did. But no one's had an opportunity to go out and put some laps down, be able to kind of fine tune things before they came into Gainesville due to the weather. And I hate the fact that it's like we got one more week before you guys get back out there and uh, go racing. What has it been like in the shop for you guys? Uh, I know when I talk to uh, Eddie and Gage in Gainesville, you guys have been putting in 15 hour days in the shop. Uh, I'm sure that still hasn't changed being that um, there's work to be done coming into the four wide. Yeah, um, man, listen. So to first touch on Gage hitting the ground running, basically he did jump back on his same exact championship motorcycle. I don't even know if we cleaned it. I mean, that, that, bike sits, <laughs> that bike sits on this lift over there. It's at the end of the, we'll call it the race room. And I don't even go on that side of the room. Nobody touches it. It's like, don't don't touch something that ain't broke. So basically, that's a joke. But he did. He hit the ground running. He was riding the same package, same combination. And they got a lot of notes and data on uh, on that motorcycle. So Andrew does a really good job pinning the tail on the donkey as far as the tune-up. And Gage does what he does every pass. So everybody else in the field who was pretty much um, – kind of winging it i shouldn't say everybody was anybody who wasn't riding the exact same thing they were riding in pomona was pretty much winging it for the most part which is why you might have saw kind of like um hit, hit home run runs or hit or miss you know you might go fast or you might go a little slower whatever the case may be but um you know shout out to the guys at vance and hines because we did we worked uh, 15 hours is an understatement but for about three or four weeks, we didn't have a single day off and we didn't leave the shop before nine o'clock at night. And that wasn't just Eddie, me and Andrew that we we drug Jay and Scott and and quite a few other people in the shop to uh to get this done. And we were building Kelly's new bike and Ellie's new bike. Those two motorcycles are literally brand new. I mean, when I say brand new, the only thing that wasn't new pretty much was the back tire. Right. We use a broken in back tire. Right. And. Q1, I remember sitting in the staging lane saying, I don't want to go before them because I had to go first. My running order was first because I'm new. I didn't want to go before them because you kind of get attached to the bikes. You kind of feel like they're one of your kids. And I wanted to watch their maiden voyage, whether it was good or bad. I just wanted to know if they went down the track because right. I pretty much was a, a, a part of building them both. But, uh, yeah, we uh, we rolled brand new motorcycles out of the trailer and hit the ground Q1. And I think. Kelly might have had some sort of an issue, but uh, not Gage. Uh, Ellie went straight down the track and ultimately ended up running his career um, best ETM mile an hour as well on a brand new bike. Yeah, that that was amazing to see. Um, and I talked to Kelly, and you know, Kelly's got her way of warming up and getting into yeah. things. Uh, yeah. You know, she'll she'll find her niche. Uh, yeah. You know, sooner than later. Um, yeah. How is it? How was it for you? You hadn't been riding in a while, and you come out. In Gainesville, I mean, the place was packed. Uh, what was your feelings, you know, going into your first hit down the racetrack in a while? Man, it was a it was a it was a wild experience for me because it's so much more than just racing, and 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 it's, it's so much more to do. We were there. We got there on Tuesday. That is the longest I've ever been at a racetrack <laughs> before I ever got to do what I'm there to do, which is ride the bike. Um, it was just a lot of media stuff and, and, um, and you know, that's part of the gig, right? Um, I had a ball, man. I had a blast. It was my birthday weekend. Um, I had, a, I had a good time. It was just a lot happening because not only is it my first pass on the bike, but this is also my first time. It's not like we're a NASCAR team and we're at the shop going through drills as far as how do you work on the bike? How do you do this? How do you do that? We were winging it and figuring that stuff out while we were racing. So I'm trying to get acclimated to the team learn how my crew guys work, learn how to fit in and not be in the way and et cetera, et cetera, finding all of that balance while trying to race. Eddie, that's his first time not being on the motorcycle. We made a joke. Andrew told me, uh, Andrew said after the first round, he said Eddie was like a fish out of water at the start line, not being on the bike. <laughs> he didn't know what to do. He almost tripped over his feet. But um, no, man, it was, it was just a lot going on, but it was fun. Ultimately, I, I had to uh, a couple times I had to make sure I took a moment to take it all in just to appreciate it. as hectic as it is, just 
appreciate what I'm here doing, and, and that's that's living my dream. Yeah, um, it is a little uh, weird not seeing seeing Eddie standing instead of being on the bike. I, yeah. I'm sure it's going to be a little bit before he gets used to that, but uh, yeah. he, he definitely seems like he's he's also uh, really excited about kind of being that mastermind that that scientist in the lab you know generating things and putting things together uh to get that bike to go faster and faster uh how much are your racing uh from previous like the xda series and and those other series have helped you in being able to i would say seamlessly get on the bike and be able to understand or try to be one with that bike because that that's important as a rider. Yeah, um, it's definitely helped. Um, I've I've been fast already. I've ridden bikes that are are quite a bit faster than the pro stock. Um, but you know, it, it, it's a it's a double edged sword, man. It helps you in a lot of ways, and it also um, it, it it's also you got let's let's call them bad habits of things <laughs> that you have to undo in order to be really good at pro stock. I mean, there's good, right? You can look right. at it as you said, you use the word seamlessly. Um, it's not really as seamless as it looks because there are things that I'm struggling with and I'm battling with that I have to make adjustments for on the motorcycle to be able to do it better. And those are things that I haven't had to work on and adjust in a long time really? because with the other bikes that I rode and everything, it, those, those tactics work just fine. So I'm still, um, I'm still learning, man. And that's the fun part about this whole deal is to be racing as long as I have been and to um, have done as much as I have to be new at something, to have to learn again. Some people probably wouldn't like that. Um, to some people, it's a hard pill to swallow to say, oh, I'm, you know, you might want to feel like you'll get jumped right on the motorcycle and be the man um, because Gage made it look like you can do that. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, no, man, I'm having a ball learning. I, I watch my videos back to back to back i watch other riders in the class uh, a lot of gauge and uh and i'm excited to have to push myself to those limits again um that's my why that's why i like to do this i, I want to push myself to my limit and uh, i still got a lot of work to do uh what's the biggest thing that you have to work on and get better at uh overall um honestly some of them i don't want to say on here because <laughs> a lot it's a lot of riders that got to work on it Gotcha. But uh, one of the biggest ones, man, I, I read Lit Q2, and this is so funny, because before this race, I had a conversation with Eddie, and I, in my whole drag racing career, I think I've only read Lit in competition twice in 20 years, literally, and maybe one other time on a test pass or something. But I don't read light, is what I thought, is what I told myself, is what I told Eddie. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm more of a safe guy. And um just what, as I was getting more comfortable on the bike and, and, and one thing, as we talked about those habits, one thing I've always had to do is push the tree. I've always kind of had um, the oddball bike. I always like to uh, go against the grain and, and that made me have to make something out of nothing, made me have to cut really good lights and try to win on a whole shot. And that's a habit of mine that I've, that I've learned over the years and it bit me uh, E2. So I got to learn that, um, trust my bike uh, you know they, they there's things that they can do to set the bike up for me and how i react and that's something that me and eddie got to have an open dialogue about because now i've learned i can red light i mean i reacted off yellow and came up red and that was a that was a shocker to me so um that's one of the main things that i'm going to work on from here on is uh me and eddie had a conversation about what adjustments antron brown actually called me shout out to antron and uh he gave me his opinion on 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 some adjustments that i can make and uh I can't wait to implement those and try them. Yeah, what a guy uh, to to learn from there in Antron Brown. Um, you're coming into your next race, and it's going to be a four-wide race. Um, any talk of that and how you to prepare for such a kind of controlled chaos on the starting line? Yeah, man. Um, you know, I, I said that. I, I, I really wish that we – got to test man that's a cool picture i like that um i really wish that i could have gotten a test and made a few more laps that way i would be more comfortable on the motorcycle and my processes so that the four wide wouldn't be something that i'd have to add into that but really if you keep it simple and say i don't have to add i don't have to factor in the four wide i'm not getting up there and playing games or worrying about 
this or that. You know, I always say you can film a movie as long as you're not pre-staged. You can sit back there and do whatever you want until you blew in the face. You know, I'm sure up until a certain amount of time. Right. But once I stay, once I pre-stage, I'm gonna make sure I'm ready. And uh, and uh, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run my lane. I think that's the biggest key to the four wide deal. Um, is to run your lane. You know, you you, you got to know the staging process. You got to know the rules. You know, you have to pay attention to an extent to your competitors. But the main deal is is if you know those rules and you know uh, and you know how it works, you just stay focused. And that's what I plan to do. Yeah, I. I think that's the easiest thing. There's a lot of things you can, especially in that four wide that you can get lost in up there on the starting line. And I think sometimes, you know, with all that going, with all that's going on, if you're not focused, you can get lost in all of that. Uh, but um, yeah, it's the most important thing to just be focused and let, you know, let the process be the process. Don't make it bigger uh, than what it is. Um, are you the one that works on your bike or, yeah. okay. So everybody works on their own bike. Yeah, so I mean, everybody has the ability and capabilities to work on everybody's bike, right? And, um, and when Gage Gage hurt a motor between the semifinals and the finals, and it was a free for all, we all had to work on Gage's bike. So, um, you know, we try to set the bikes up as similar as we can so that everything's in the same place and everything. Um, but yeah, no, in between rounds, I'm responsible for. Um, you know, and I got help. Uh, Jay Craywood comes over and oversees after he's done with Gage's bike. And I got Ray, um, Ray, who also drives our truck. He's a really good guy. He helps me out a lot. He helps with the clutch. And uh, and Eddie comes out after he's done on the laptop and just oversees. And I think a lot of that was because it was my first event, just to make sure everything was going smooth. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure here soon it'll be like, look, figure it out and do it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, in between runs, I, I work on the bike. I uh, – take it apart I check over everything and we got a little checklist that's on my toolbox and you know the other guys don't even have to look at it but I, I literally go down it as like an itemized list that has to make you feel comfortable having all that experience around you uh, especially coming right out of the gate um, gives you has to give you a level of, of comfort uh, and puts you in a at ease so to speak uh, just to be able to go out and be able to do what you need to do whether it's on the racetrack or or you know service in the bike between rounds yeah absolutely it does um you know so much experience and so many races won I, I don't even know the count if you look at the count between andrew hines eddie craywick gage herrera ellie tonglet and if we could put a tally on how many races won that that is in those four names you know it, it's it's a pleasure to be able to say that anything i need help with or any even even if it's not working on the motorcycle or the bike itself something mental something in my technique or whatever case may be, I got four champions that I can walk over to and say, Hey, like, can you help me with this? Um, right. I can't imagine being in another race trailer on another team, having a race against that, as opposed to having it at my disposal. So right. uh, de definitely, definitely feeling lucky, man. Yeah. Um, I, it just, I find I, when I first heard about it, I was like, <laughs> I asked Eddie, I said, what are you trying to do? Assemble the Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of analogies, man. One person said, well, "This is like uh, Perez and Verstappen, you know, the Formula One team." And it, yeah, it, there was a lot of different uh, different analogies uh, of people saying that. And uh, and to be honest with you, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Um, and and not just that per se, but this whole a big piece of this whole deal that I, that I don't think is talked about enough is is when Vance Hines came to me about this whole deal one of the main things where we want to bring new blood in the class. We want to bring, you know, it was kind of a deal where all the riders kind of swapped back and forth between teams, sort of almost. You had new people come in here and there, but right. if you weren't in NHRA, they didn't really look at you. And Gage, and he's not the first one, Chip Ellis, Eddie Craywick. I mean, everybody had a first race, right? But right. I think the splash that he made and the way he rides has opened up a lot of eyes to the fact that uh, Joey Gladstone as well. I, I mm -hmm. sometimes wait, forget to mention that, but mention him. But uh, I think that Joey, Gage, Chip, people like that have shown that there's guys out there that are doing other forms of racing that can do this and do it well. We just got to find them. And that's right. what their main deal was. was and, and, that, and that brings in new fans. It brings in a new group of people because, I mean, at the Gators, maybe it's something that I noticed because it's my timeline, but – there were so many people who stopped watching NHRA or Pro Stock Motorcycle who were like at the edge of their seats, don't miss a beat. And I was like that last year or 
I should say a couple of years ago, I would watch the races that I knew people racing. And right. I think that's a big piece to what's going on and what's making our class so hot. Yeah. I, I also think you being in this class also it engages well. Uh, Joey as well also gets eyes on other forms of motorcycle racing as well, because um, there's plenty of it out there. I had an opportunity to attend a, a couple uh, man cup events yeah. uh, here at uh, South Georgia Motorsports Park. And uh, that's where I really got um, my love for motorcycle racing even more than yeah. what I had. Uh, just being able to see those forms of motorcycle racing up close. Uh, what really got you into motorcycle racing? You know, most people look for four wheels. Why did you choose two? Four is too, four is too, too many. And it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. I think that some of the guys that drive cars, like a pro my car or, or a funny car, I've stood at the start line and watched them go down the racetrack. I think they're nuts. I wouldn't drive half of those cars. I would rather <laughs> on a bike. Um, but what got me into it, man, it's been a family thing, man. I'm, I'm generational. This is a generational thing. Uh, my father, my, I'm sorry, my grandfather, my grandmother, my father, my uncle, my brothers, my sisters, my aunts. This is all we do. This motorcycles has been our life. Um, and I've really got the bug bad. I mean, I got it bad. <laughs> this was, I, I would wake up in the morning before school and watch racing, watch the same tapes over and over. Um, watch it and i get home from school hurry up and do my homework so i could watch racing tapes and it's just been it's just been something that uh it's been something that's been in my blood my uncle ricky uh ricky gadson for uh no i'm 14 time national champion i don't even know i lost track a long time ago um he kept me with him man he, he took me around the country to every single race i missed a lot of school my attendance record was not good i was going i was going racing so uh, that's kind of what got me in it, man. I just got the bug bad, and I knew this is what I wanted to do. It's what I always wanted to do. I went to college. That was funny. I went to college just because I thought I was supposed to. I dropped out after the first year and said, I'm, I'm going to race motorcycles, and been chasing it ever since. Man, that's awesome. Uh, I, I kind of got the bug with racing the same way. My uncle always raced, and he took us to our first NHRA event. I believe it was at Maple Grove Raceway. Um, I was like in elementary school and I didn't know anything about, you know, I knew about people racing cars, you know, their own personal cars, but I didn't know anything about this. And, uh, man, af ever since that day, it's been, it's like a drug, man. You just, you just hooked to it. I, I, I do believe I have motorcycle like in my blood, but my wife wouldn't have any of that right now. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you, man. It is a, it is, it is bad, man. It's addicting. It's uh, it's something that once you get the bug for, it, and and just imagine as a rider, or you know, because I, I was saying it, it never stops. Like your your milestones, like once you reach one, like I've heard people say, man, if I could just go two hundred, I'd be satisfied. I'd be done. No, you're not. When you go two hundred, then you're gonna be like, man, if I can just go two o five or two ten, it never stops. Right. So that's that is this and it's it, it like I said it pushes you to your limits it keeps trying to make you reach new heights it keeps you young I mean I know guys that are still seventy plus drag racing motorcycles because they're still chasing that high. What is your biggest goal that you would like to reach in your first season uh, racing pro stock motorcycle? Um, in the first season, man, I really would like to win rookie of the year, and and that's uh you know, that's a fun deal because whether I win it or not is, is not, if I don't win it, I won't be as upset because I'm competing against a lot of great racers, but one notably is Tony Stewart, literally Tony Stewart. How many people can say they've competed with him for anything? So it's not direct, right. not racing in his same class, but right. I'm racing against Tony Stewart for rookie of the year. That's pretty, that's pretty wild. So that in itself, I'm going to enjoy whether I win or lose, I'm going to enjoy that challenge of trying to beat Tony Stewart at something. Uh, so rookie of the year is a big one. And, and uh, man, I like to win a race. That would be cool. Um, I think that I have the team to do it. I think I have the bike to do it. We just got to connect all the dots, man. It's not, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. And, uh, and I don't think that it'll only be the gauge show this year. I think that as hot as our class is right now and as, as driven as people are right now, you're going to see it tighten up a little bit here coming up and, if you any race you win this year is going to be you're going to have to fight for it. So I'd like to do that once. 
Yeah, I agree with you on that. That was my thought coming out of Gainesville uh, initially was the fact that uh, everybody's real quick to to talk about what Gage had done, and, and it, it was great. But at the same time, he's on a bike that they're familiar with. Everybody else was coming in either with new equipment uh, or a whole new program when you look at Matt Smith switching back to what he was doing with the V-Twin stuff. And it's just going to take a little time. I think Angie showed that it's there. Yep. And, you know, they just – nobody had any runs to go testing or any of that. I think now we've had some time in between. You'll have the four wide. We'll start getting a little bit of a groove. And yeah. I think you're going to start seeing other bikes – make some make some really good runs and start throwing some haymakers and saying hey yeah. look we're here too yeah well, one notable thing is, is it, to piggyback on what you just said is uh the conditions from friday and saturday to sunday were a big swing yes um, friday and saturday were similar and sunday was completely different sunday was similar to dallas last year when gage set the record so again you take people who are um you know, they know that bike, they know that program, and they were able to take advantage of the conditions where a lot of people missed. You should have been able to pick up around a 10th, and some people did. Um, Gage did. I did. Um, I think Mark Ingerson and Angie, she like she picked up more than a 10th. Yeah. And then you saw some people who weren't able to really capitalize on it and didn't pick up that 10th. I think Matt, in fact, went slower on Sunday than he did on Friday and Saturday. So once – a lot of those details and things and people start getting their program to where um, they know what to do when the opportunity presents itself, you're going to see it tighten up big time. People are going to get their tune ups together and get the, uh, and get, and get their mojo back. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with you on that. And drag racing mayhem. I will say I am one of those voters uh, for rookie of the year. It's going to be tough this year. <laughs> It is a crowded, crowded room. So you're really going to have to pay attention. Uh, there are guidelines for it. Um, sometimes I feel like some of the voters do not follow those guidelines, but I, I'm very astute in, in trying to make sure that the best person is chosen uh, for rookie of the year. So, yeah, it's a crowded room, it, but it makes it for a fun rookie of the year race. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, racers that are going to be a part of that rookie of the year, including yourself. Um, let everybody know where they can follow you at and keep up with what's going on. And, um, you know, what's, you know, what, so they can see what's next. I love those videos that Eddie does too um, for uh, Vance and Hines and the Revzilla yep. uh, Habusa team. Yep. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Richard Gadsden PSM. It's actually in the, uh, in the deal here. Um, Richard Gadsden on Facebook. Um, the uh, racing page is the one with the Revzilla colors in the background. It's my headshot from our press release. Um, always check out Vance and Hines Motorsports page. Um, um, we are uh, the Charlotte Four Wide Nationals, obviously, are what's next for us. And uh, I'll start getting a little bit more action and, and uh, uh, going on my social media page to keep people updated. Uh, it's just been such an adjustment period getting here yeah. adjusted. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to start uh, start kind of getting get, allowing some attention to uh, – to that and uh you guys keep up with us and uh should be a fun year yeah i'm looking forward to it and uh first time but not the last time uh really enjoy talking with you guys and uh hopefully uh get an opportunity to get gauge on here in a little bit but uh we'll keep you all in the rotation and uh let you promote yourselves and talk about what you guys are doing so that the fans can be really in touch with what's going on over there in vance and hines appreciate it uh, thank Richard. you Appreciate it. Have a good one, bud. You too. Yes, Richard Gaston, everybody. And uh, I tell you, I'm really looking forward. When they picked him to be the guy to be on that bike, I was very excited about that. Um, you got two. I, I think there's a couple, like he mentioned, there's a couple in the class that it's just the way that they race. Um, you know, very, very to the T, to the letter uh, uh, with what they do. Um, and I, I just a great addition to the class and it's just going to be fun. It's going to be real fun this year on what we see, uh, coming from pro stock motorcycle this year. And, um, I, I think everybody should stay tuned. I just hate the lull in between Gainesville and the next race. We got to fix that somehow. Got to fix that somehow. I hope so. Well, it's on to the next one. And I'm super excited 
at this moment. We have the entire crew of the True No Spots podcast with us to discuss what is going to be one of the biggest WrestleManias in history. We got the champ in the building and his other half, Sith. What's going on, buddy? You're muted, by the way. <laughs> there you go. It, it the wouldn't be a problem. The old man him. always does that. He always does that. That's his, state. That's his gimmick. That's his gimmick. <laughs> well, one of the gimmicks. How's everyone doing tonight? It's good to be here. Dujene, good to see you, my brother. How you doing, champ? Would it be happening? Yes, it's great to be here with my tag team partner, be here with DJ. We're talking about what is known as the Super Bowl of professional wrestling. That is WrestleMania. Yeah, I, 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 it is unbelievable that it is here. Uh, but I will say this. Leading up to WrestleMania, we have seen some of the best storytelling I think we've seen in WWE in a while. Uh, it's taken a little bit for Rock to get it get in his bag. I think he was a little bit out of touch, you know, of being being cutting promos and being out there. Now he seems to have found his, you know, he's found his groove. He looks yep. and it things just seem a lot like there's there's this little bit of attitude era that we're seeing here uh, with some of these uh, these storytelling moments. Uh, what are you guys thinking about? what's going on I'll, I'll start with you champ what do you start what are you thinking about what's going on this lead up uh to wrestlemania well one of the things that I'm is that rock is not rambling on in his promos like he was at, <laughs> uh, when he first came back he was rambling on and rambling on it was like he couldn't get to the point but now he's getting more to the point than, than normal and he has his promos have a lot of edge to them like even more edge than he did during the attitude era I mean, more profanity, which, you know, he's been he's been admonished about, but he, he's he's the rock. Like, what are you going to do? You know, right. But I'm noticing that it's a lot more edge yeah. to them. It's a lot more uh, cohesive and it's, it gets to the point a lot more. And I think that's what you need, especially with this sort of fan base that has very low attention spans like they, they can't, you know, they can only pay attention. But for so long before they're like, OK, get on their phones and get on TikTok and get on uh, whatever and, and drown out what's going on on the screen. So what they, what they that's what that's what's going on with this, that The Rock is definitely showing that why he was considered one of the best on the mic in his day is what we're seeing right now. I agree. Um, ah, I'm learning all this stuff. I was trying to do something cool, but obviously I'm not because I'm doing weird stuff now. Uh, We'll figure it out here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, here we go. We'll leave it here. Uh, Sith, what's your thoughts on the lead up? Where it comes to The Rock, we're beginning to starting to see not only the segue of Hollywood Rock, but the swagger and the attitude of Nation of Domination Rock. Yes. Coupled with the edge of Roman when he turned heel and turned into the tribal chief and the rock is like, where's the appreciation? Where's the love? What have y'all done for me lately? Why the fuck aren't you going out and seeing black Adam? Why didn't you go do this? <laughs> you know, type deal. But I agree with champ. It's taken a little bit for rock to get back into that groove because, you know, he's been away for so long where it mm -hmm. comes to actually going there. But I'm amazed with one thing. They haven't done the callback yet to the 2015 Royal Rumble at the very end when Roman won and rock's going, Hey, he won. Acknowledge him. And everyone's booing that motherfucker out of the building. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. We I want a game of brain. Fuck you. Right. You know? I remember that. And with an interview that. that Roman did, he admitted he was very uncomfortable being pushed into that role after the shield broke up. He wanted to be a heel then. And so that's sad that that didn't happen because it should have yeah. happened. And everybody knew it. Everybody knew it. And they just chose not to it was the perfect time and everybody was eating it up as well yep but yeah i think that this build where it comes to what's going to be the two main events for this weekend 
those have been fire overall for the most part once thing once rock got into his groove and he stopped doing you know going over 20 minutes <laughs> yeah he got into a groove and i was like okay then back into this i can't spend 30 minutes on the mic i gotta let these guys have their time but hey we can craft this out so yeah i'm good with it yeah um uh, even a lot of the guys uh drew mcintyre that whole deal um he, I'm just I, I'm I'm just a little I'm a little salty with punk, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty decent though. They were throwing shots at each other. I like what's going on here with Damage Control uh, when they rolled out uh, Jade and uh, you know those three black women standing in the in the ring together, uh, Naomi and 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 Bianca Belair. I mean, it just looks like a it there's a whole lot of strength going on uh, Mm -hmm. within, within all of WWE. And uh, it's been fun to watch and it's been a pretty good lead up. Uh, I'll start with the first thing that we will be talking about. This is the Saturday night or will be your Saturday day one match. Uh, The rock in Roman Reigns versus the uh, Cody Rhodes and Mr. Seth Rollins. Uh, Seth, how do you see this going? Um, and, uh, you know, who is your pick for all of this? Okay. I'm going to elaborate on this. The picks that champ and I are making tonight are subject to change. Our official picks will go up Friday night over on the no spots podcast, Facebook page. I'm going with rock and Roman here. I think Cody eats the pin for one reason. One, because one, we're going to have bloodline rules. Sunday night for the main event. And two, it gives you that aura of, wait a minute. Can, after going through hell, can Cody finish the story? Because we all want Cody to finish the story. We all do at this point. But I have Rock and Roman winning. I think that The Rock might pin Cody. But there's going to be a lot of shenanigans going on to protect Cody and Seth and Loss. Yeah. Champ, how you feel about it? I'm also leaning towards the uh, the bloodline winning this tag match, but my reason for them winning has a different feel to it. And the reason why I think that they win it so that it can be bloodline rules is so that The Rock can cost Roman the undisputed universal championship so that they can rock versus roman at SummerSlam later on this year in cleveland i think that's what's going to happen and the seeds are going to get planted they've already been kind of planted with a couple easter eggs that have been shown that that have been exhibited by the rock but the seeds will be definitely planted by the end of wrestlemania sunday when he cost roman the championship after getting them no uh bloodline rules which means anything goes so rock and roman will win but it will set up for rock to be the ultimate betrayer of the tribal chief yeah that's the way i see it um i really do hope that cody does finish the story um i I also can see i also can see that there could be a chance that he doesn't finish the story but there's just too much there's too much with rock and I've always felt from the beginning that The Rock is a plant to screw it for his cousin at the end. He's going to do something to cost him that match at the end. And I feel like they do have to win here to get those bloodline rules. Because if you don't, then it just becomes really obvious. And then some, at, at some point, if they don't win it's not even about it being obvious. It starts to feel like Cody doesn't even get an opportunity to even finish the story here. So I think that's something that has to be done. Um, I do think leading up to this, they've done a pretty good job of kind of uh, diminishing the obvious with some of the things that have been done in Raw and SmackDown. So I, I agree with you. I think this is a win for the bloodline. We go in bloodline rules and, uh, it's Cody's story to finish uh, on Sunday night. Now, the women's match, Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch here, uh, there's two powerhouses. I just don't see Rhea Ripley 
losing this at all. I disagree. I disagree. Why? Why you say that, champ? Listen, Rhea has had a hell of a run as the women's world champion. Her run is fantastic. But the way that things have elevated in terms of the build of the last two weeks, it's almost like they're telegraphing. He's frozen. Oh, shit. Just from a standpoint of it started off that you know, Becky was trying to find a way to get Becky was trying to she wasn't. She was trying to figure it out. She finally found a way to get in the with chamber. Boom. She's in WrestleMania. She's going after the Women's World Championship. But her focus was on Nia Jax. She finally found Nia Jax. Now she's focused on, on Rhea, but Rhea felt the focus wasn't completely on her, so she decided to invoke family. And because she invoked family, that brings out the fieriness in the Irish last kick. And and now things have ramped up to a, another level. Like, I mean, they had she had to be pulled away from Rhea on an appearance on the yeah, MMA out. I saw that. You know? and, they, and then they had a conversation Monday night on Raw. So, I mean, this has gotten bumped up so fast with, with this happening on Saturday night. But I really see Becky Lynch becoming the women's world champion. Rhea's had a, a fantastic run. But I think that this WrestleMania is going to see Judgment Day fall, honestly. And it's going to be Rhea's going to lose the women's world title. And then when we talk about the tag title match, I'll tell you who's going to win that as well. But it ain't going to be the Judgment Day. Yeah, I, I, I do feel like Rhea has an opportunity. But you do make a good point. On the other side, on the flip side of that, I do see a lot of L's within the Judgment Day. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I'm with you, Ray. I, I don't know if I see her losing. Um, she ha has become very big, but like you, you do make a good point, champ. This has become a big, big story. And this has become a big rivalry coming into this thing, uh, with all the things that have transpired, uh, with, you know, her showing up different shows and, and et cetera. Seth, how do you, Seth, how do you feel about this whole thing here? This will end one of two ways. One, Dom Dom and company interfere and Rhea retains. Or Dom Dom and company's interference backfires and Becky wins. This is a match I'm going back and forth on here. Um, this morning when I wrote it up, I was saying Becky... Then when I had supper right before I came on here with you guys, I started leaning towards Rhea. This is something that I might go back and forth with. But for right now, I'm leaning. I'm tilting towards Rhea retaining. But by Friday night, that could switch over to Becky. That's yeah. how close this match is. It, it is pretty close. And I agree with you, Ray. Um, I do see something. Something's not right mm -hmm. with Dom. And it does something just doesn't smell right, doesn't pass the smell test. Nope. And I, I think something's going on there as well. Uh, and I do think they're done uh once they lose Dom for sure. I, I agree with you, Seth. I think there's so many variables. Um, you know, I don't know if I'll change my pick, but right now I, I'm I'm sticking with uh uh Rio on this one. Yes, uh Marcus Be Becky to prove a point. I could see that as well. I mean it's yep. It's it really is a toss up. Uh, I just think that right now uh, she's doing so well. Like, how could it be that you know she would lose at WrestleMania? Um, you know, anything's possible though. Yeah, I think yeah. Dom's gonna go with him too. I agree mm -hmm. with you, Ray. I, I think he that's his next move. Um, you know, especially with Pops uh, feuding with them as well. I, I think <laughs> that is the next move to see there. Uh, as we move on here, Sami Zayn and Gunther, do you really believe that Sami even has a remote shot here? I mean, I don't see it. Puncher's Since, chance. Puncher's chance. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like the uh, pull out the brass knuckles and swing for the fences and hope yeah. you land us. I think I figured out who does that. beat Walter. That's the name we know him as. Walter <laughs> mm -hmm. has had. Listen, Walter has had 
and it's a fantastic run as Intercontinental Champ. He's going down in history as the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion in history. There's not, he's, that's not going away for a long time, okay? Not going for a long time, but it's time. It's time. And yeah. Sammy's going to be the one to do it. Sammy main evented last year's WrestleMania Saturday, won the tag titles. This year, he's not main eventing, but he's going to win the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. He's going to do it back to back WrestleManias. He's coming out of there with a championship. I mean, you know, that's not that's not a bad look. I think I, I was looking at a lot of things of him building himself um, right now. He he is coming in pretty hot, and uh, he does have to redeem himself from last year. Um, Anything's possible. I think tonight I'm going to say Gunther. That might change by Friday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if Walter retains, there's somebody who is a longtime rival of his down in NXT who's currently NXT World Champion that when he gets that call up, you can't tell me he's not going to have his eye on Walter. Ilya Dragunov. Yeah, they're the main yeah. eventer. Yeah. Yeah, he is going to the main event. I'm going back and forth right now. I'm seeing Sammy for an absolute shocking upset. But could that change Friday night when I talk to Champ about this to make our official predictions? Yeah. yeah, it could. But right now, I'm leaning towards Sammy because, as Champ said, Walter's had an incredible reign. I'm not taking anything from him, he's headed to the main event. But eventually, to get him to that main event, he's got to drop the IC title. If Sammy doesn't win, get Dragunov to lose at Battleground, then bring Dragunov up, then have him become IC champion over at SummerSlam. Yeah, I could see that. I could I could definitely see that. I, I think it's more likely that Sammy probably would win mm -hmm. versus the latter. Jimmy and Jay Uso, the brothers going head to head here. Um, this has the makings of something great. Uh, these two are high flyers, they give it all. Um, this has the potential to be a fantastic match. But which Us do you have? Are we yeeting or are we no yeeting? Seth, you can go first. I'm yeeting. <laughs> I'm going with main event J here, but with a twist, though. I think it's possible that you get two versions of the bloodline started. One on Raw, one on SmackDown, because I think what happens in the main event of Night 2, you're going to have two factions of it going at it. So I think Jay could form his own version of it in time over on Monday Night Raw. But I am yeeting on this right now. I think Jimmy beats, I think Jay beats Jimmy. Champ, yeet or no yeet? Definitely yeet on this one. <laughs> and this is a, uni a unique thing is that every 15 years, 15 WrestleManias, we get a brother versus brother matchup. We remember the first one, which was Bret Hart versus Owen Hart back at WrestleMania 10. We didn't, we're now, we also have Matt versus Jeff Hart uh, at WrestleMania 25. And now we're getting the Uso brothers going at it, Jimmy and Jay. Mm -hmm. I mean, what else, what else can you say about it? Except the emotions are there. You know, my only, my only down point to this is that we haven't gotten any more like really promos between the two brothers, you yeah. know, that really built this up. And I, you know, I, I, Jimmy Jay did an interview about this like a while, a couple weeks ago, something like something recent, where he said that you know the any promos they do is going to be a lot of emotions, will be a lot of reality because of the fact. He, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to is to hearing the the raw emotions of being up against your little like your your basically your older brother because he's old, he is the older twin. And I didn't get that, and I'm kind of sad about that because I was expecting that. But either way, I think this is going to be a really good matchup, but Jay wins. Yeah, I'm yeeting on this one, too. Uh, I, I just – he's got a lot of momentum. Uh, main event Jay does, and I I just don't see him losing here. I, I think uh, Marcus 
put made a good point. He said he said Jimmy's not hungry enough, and it, and really, I mean, I'm gonna say this to your point, Marcus. To your point, when you look at the two and what each have done, there's too many failures on Jimmy's side for him to be able to win this mm-hmm. matchup. Uh, Jay is coming in here wide open, you know, guns blazing, and uh, I don't see I don't see a loss on that mm-hmm. at all. I think this is something to propel him to another level uh, and be able to uh, start something new. A new what that is, I don't know, but it's going to be something. Six pack ladder match yeah. for the undisputed tag team championships. You have the Judgment Day versus the Awesome Truth versus DIY versus New Day versus the Catch New Catch Republic and versus A Town Down. I'm gonna tell you down under. I'm gonna tell you right now. Like about four of those teams don't stand a chance. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start with you, champ. Who you got in this one? This one's gonna be a, a, a pretty interesting match here. And it and with all these teams and it being a ladder match on top of that. So I was having a chat with a good friend of mine who I mod for on Twitch about this. And apparently the rules are that the match ends when both sets of title belts are brought down from uh, by a ladder, which means there is a strong, nearly a 98% probability that the undisputed tag team championships are going to be split on this night. They're going to be split on this night. I think DIY takes the raw tag team championships. And as much as and I, I, I'm going to go out on limb, and I think that the new catch Republic take the smack titles and they split them up. And then what they're going to probably do is on the raw after mania and the SmackDown after mania, rechristen them to new, ta- to new names, uh, new names for tag team championships. They're going to get rechristened. That could be the Raw and SmackDown Tag Championships. They're going to get rechristened to probably like the WWE Tag Team Championships and the WWE World Tag Team Championships, something like that, probably. Um, but I think that DIY and New Catch Republic are walking out as Tag Champs. Judgment Day is walking out empty-handed. You seeing the same thing here, Sith? Yeah, same thing. Look, all respect to Awesome Truth, A Downtown Under, all respect to the Judgment Day. All respect to the New Day, who are one of my top 10 tag teams of all time. But, no, I agree. DIY gets Raw. New Catch Republic gets SmackDown. It gets rechristened next week on TV, which will work out great. And something that I've been pushing for for well over a year now comes to fruition. Both brands have their own world champion. They'll have their own tag team champions. They'll have their own women's champion. They'll have their own men's make card title. Yeah, the women's tag team title will still be around. That's a consolation prize. We all know that. But you get the point. You could have brands locked in here for the most part, and that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I I see it the same way, guys. The way you guys see it, I see it the same way. Uh, I really, when I heard the rules, I was like, wow, okay. I mm-hmm. think now the titles get split here. Um, you know, there's there's no way they keep these uh, titles uh, together anymore. Um, and then they'll be able to rebrand and do what they need to do. Uh, I do like this. We'll get uh, we'll get Chant back in a minute. He fell yeah. off there. Um, but yeah, I... I I really like what's going to go on here. I think it's long overdue, and you're right. I do not see – I think the Judgment Day leaves empty-handed, and it's a possibility they leave empty-handed. Everybody leaves. The only thing they're going to have is a money-in-the-bank case. <laughs> yeah, and even that, I think it's cashed in a backlash. Right. I do, too. I do, too. Yep, yes, Marcus, sir, I agree. Two different, two different, two mm-hmm. different winners there. I agree. Yeah, it would be nice if Awesome Truth did win, though, wouldn't it? Like, could That'd you imagine fun, that? But... <laughs> could you imagine that the shenanigans? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it would be it would Truth be absolutely fire. Up on SmackDown by mistake. Yeah. That, I mean, it would be absolutely fire. 
uh, of what's going on here. Uh, I think this is the last one. I did not mark these. This is the last one, I believe, or the second to the last one, I believe, for the Saturday night. We have Bianca Belair, Naomi, Jade Cargill versus Damage Control. Um, I think this has the makings of being something electric. And before I start, I want to say right out of the gate, AEW and Tony Khan deserves more credit than they have been given for Jade. They made her look like a star and so were able to build her to make her viable to be picked by WWE, unbeknownst to them that she needed a little bit more work. And I'll say this. They also did things within the confines of what she did well, which made her look very good in AEW. I think now that she's learned the WWE way, uh, polished her skills, and she looks more comfortable the second time she came out here recently, um, this has the makings of something dangerous. And uh, these three ladies, I think Damage Control is in tr- a world of trouble. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we're going to see an amazing match uh, by this six set of women here uh, in in this particular get up. What do you say, uh, Sith? All right. I'm going to piggyback off what you said real quick about me. Look, one, yes, I'm going with what Marcus Sage, our good friend there, said. Black Girl Magic, absolutely. I'm going with going against damage control here. But here's the thing that people need to understand. When you come from an AEW or a TNA or a New Japan, you need to come to WWE, you have to develop to, to a totally different system. Okay? Yep. Look at what they're doing with Lexus King, the former Brian Pillman Jr. He had to adapt from what he learned in AEW, MLW, and the Indies to learn the WWE. WE way of doing things starting in NXT. With Jade, they knew that they had a former world champion on their hands that had a one hell of a win streak to say the undefeated streak to say the least. And what you have here is someone who needed to take a few months down at the PC to really learn the system because this woman's gonna be destined for greatness, possibly in WWE. And like what I said. She wanted to be with her mentor. She wanted to be with Cody Rhodes, who was her mentor. And like Ray just said, we all knew that Jay needed work. Debut was fire. It her was. presentation last week was absolute, was perfect. It was perfect. Okay, you could not set it up any other way. So now you get to this match. They're teasing something that we haven't brought up yet. Bianca could turn heel at some point. You know, I was listening to the pivot. Yep. And I they they had hinted around those things. We've seen them try to do that with uh Montez Ford and, mm-hmm. and you know the the whole faction they have yep. there. It it really didn't take. They were still getting <laughs> cheered. Yeah. Um but I got a feeling that this is a possibility. Somebody's got to move back for somebody else to move forward. And I think Jade is going to take Bianca's spot and she, Bianca is going to take the back seat and go to more of a heel uh, deal here. I do agree with you on that because I think there has to be some movement to get Jade to propel a little bit. Right. And who else to work with, to be honest with y'all? But work with damage control because they are very skilled. They are awesome yes. in the ring. Work with Bailey. I mean, work with Naomi. Work with Bianca. Work with Bailey. Charlotte, when she comes back as well, you have all this wealth of talent that Jade could work with and learn under over there and hone her craft. Yeah. And I think people were a bit too harsh on Jade. When she left AEW? Yes. I I think people were overly critical of her leaving. Oh, God, she's leaving. What is she going to do? Girl's going to be just fine. Yeah. 
Um, and I think this may be something that fits her. Again, yeah. you know, you to be with a mentor is important in any type of, you mm -hmm. know, fighting ring type, you know, you know, uh, sport. And I think that is something that she needed. Um, and it, I think it's going to be put on full display here, uh, you know, here at WrestleMania of why that was a good move for her. Um, you have to be in a place that you're comfortable. And I don't think it was any ill will against AEW, but at the end of the day, uh, to grow um, and to be able mm -hmm. to reach your full potential, sometimes you have to make uh, decisions that are best for you. And I don't think it was anything negative towards AEW. I just think Jade made the best decision for Jade in her career. And I don't fault her for that. Um, mm -mm. And I think some of the fans, benefit from they that. don't understand the logistics of the fucking business part. My right. Friend. Exactly. You don't understand that in order to grow, sometimes you have to leave where you started and sprout your wings elsewhere. Yeah. Look at AG Styles. He was a TNA lifer. Yeah. Then he went on the Indies. He went to New Japan. He became a part of the Bullet Club. Then he comes to WWE and catches on like that. Yeah. That and that's one thing. But when you get someone as fresh as Jade Cargill, who had just broken into the business via all elite wrestling. Yeah. There you have to cultivate. There you have to take your time. Right. People fans, some fans really took it personal when she left. And I'm just saying, chill. Let her do what she believes is best for her. Right. For um, her family and everything. And let's let's be real. It's a different type of uh it's a different type of wrestling yep. at all elite. And it sometimes that style of wrestling doesn't really give you an opportunity to really have the time to cultivate something. You see the mm -hmm. talent, but it doesn't give you the time to really work on that to in, in mainly the fundamentals of wrestling. Um, and I, you know, no one wanted to see her be another. Goldberg, okay, no, you know, the, because that's what ends up happening. Um, you end up, you end up producing something of that nature, where you end up with another Goldberg, where they're just a one-trick pony. And I, I really think that, um, to her credit, and I, I say all elites credit as well, allowing her to do what she needed to do and what was best for her career. I think we're going to see um, the benefits of that yeah. as well. And we have the champ back in the building. I'll ask you the same thing uh, here before we get off of this topic. Uh, the Bianca, uh, Naomi, Jade, I do think they are the ones that are going to be winning here. Uh, uh, me and Sith think that Bianca Belair is going to be a heel turn here. What are your feelings on this match? Um, the the Bianca Belair heel turn is pretty valid. I will have to say it's a pretty pretty valid argument to make uh, because of some of the some of what she has done recently and her attitude recently. So it's kind of valid for that. But I do feel like uh, the team of Naomi and Jade and Bianca will win. I think Jade will be the one that gets the pinfall most likely on Dakota Kai, um, and then. There's a possibility that after the match, Bianca could have a turn or they could hold off on the turn until SmackDown. Uh, but I do think that Jade will be the one that gets the pinfall victory for this team at WrestleMania in her actual like debut in a non-Battle Royal match. Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to, like I said, I think it's uh, somebody has to step back in order for someone to step forward. And I think Jade is the one that will be stepping forward. Uh, I think, and, and don't get me wrong, it's not in a negative sense that, you know, Bianca's stepping back from that that light. Uh, you know, she's still going to be a force whether she's a, a heel or not. But I think that had that change has to happen uh, so that the babyface guard can be given uh, or be placed on Jade and allow her to ascend. Because I think Jade can do both here. But I think to start right now with uh, all – the hype, all of the anticipation that a lot of us have had for her debut, it is important for her to be a babyface in this in this going forward for a while before we even start talking about that. Now, 
Rey Mysterio <laughs> and Dragon Lee versus Santo Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. This is the one of this will be the last of the package of your Saturday uh, WrestleMania 40 cards here. How do you guys see in this playing out? I think it's Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee, but I'll start with you, champ. What do you see transpiring here in this particular match? Um, right now, I'm, I'm like, I'm like back and forth between the two because there's a there's a there's an X there's a factor in here that's not being factored in here, but I'm going to factor it in, and that's Car that's Carlito because of the fact that everybody and their mama thought it was going to be Carlito teaming with Ray to take on Santos Escobar Dominic Mysterio, but it was Dragon Lee, and you can see the look on Carlito's face. He doesn't look too pleased, but he's trying to play it off. So that's something that needs to be taken into consideration when you look ahead to this matchup because he could play a factor in this matchup, and I feel like he may play a factor in this matchup giving – Santos Escobar and Dom Mysterio the victory. Remember, Dom last year at WrestleMania, I think right. Dom gets his win back in this sense because of the help from Carlito. So I'm going with, right now, I'm going with Santos Escobar, Dominic Mysterio. That could change by Friday, but right now, I'm going Santos and Dom because of Carlito. Sif? Carlito has always been best as a heel. And you could tell in his body language and character Friday night, he wasn't too happy about not being the one at Ray's side and Dragon Lee being picked instead. And what people need to remember is who did Dominic lose the NXT North American Championship to? Dragon Lee. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so not only do you have the chance to get a match off of Ray get that one back, but also the win back against Dragon Lee. So I have Santos and Dom winning more than likely with the help of Carlito or at the end of, after the match, Carlito turns and joins Legato Del Fantasma. But I, that's how I see it happening. That's an interesting thought. Very interesting thought. Mm. Now we're on to Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I will start with the Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits versus the Final Testament here. Uh, Karrion Cross really does nothing for me, to be honest. Uh, although I, I, there has been a level of improvement uh, with what they have done here when you have uh, AP there uh, helping things out. Um I think this has to be Lashley and the Street Profits. What do you say? Well, first off, Lashley and the Street Profits actually have a name. They're called the Pride. Yeah. I like in which I like. I like that name a lot. Me the too. Pride, along with that with uh with uh the name is lit. Anyway, this has been going on for weeks now with this rivalry. Of course, you know, Karrion Cross and Lashley had their singles match, but no contest. Uh Street Profits and AO traded, vic have traded victories amongst each other in tag team matches, but this is going to be a Philadelphia fight, which means there's no deep no count out. Someone's going to win the matchup, and conventional wisdom tells me that the pride will take it. Honestly, you know, I get your feeling about Karrion Cross. I thought he was a lot better and a lot better presented in NXT, especially when he became NXT champion. I think he yeah. was presented a lot better. But, right, but I mean, but I breaking news from Sage in your, in your chat. He's joining us for WrestleMania Sunday for live yes. reactions. Yes. Yes. That should be fun. It always is. <laughs> That's the wildest stuff, man. I don't think y'all anybody who's ever watched the live reactions on our Twitch channel with him there, he says some of the wildest stuff you could ever imagine. So I'm telling you, WrestleMania Sun is going to be something you want to behold. Yes. If you've never yeah. watched the live reactions with Sage with us. Because yeah. already enough I have to deal with man right here, but then I gotta deal with him. <laughs> Lord help me. 
Thank, thank God, thank God, I have wine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sid. What do you got to say about? Yeah, Sid. What do you, you got to say about this one? As much as I like Cross back when he was in TNA's Killer Croc, and as much as I love AOP, and especially Paul Ellering. I mean, come on, greatest manager, one of the greatest managers of all time. I'm not feeling New Test, Final Testament here. I've tried my hardest to try to get into this faction. I just can't at this point. Going with the pride to win here, but I really wish that they would figure out what to do with Cross beyond the NXT presentation? What to do with AOP besides them being a stack and pack and rack and tag team? Yeah, it's really been wasted in my opinion. And uh, I think the whole package, I, I see, I saw what they were trying to do. It just doesn't work for me. Um, and I think they need to scrap, go back to the drawing board uh, for that one. Man, I'm really looking forward to this matchup. Uh, let me talk to you. Yeah, I got LA uh, Knight. Right. He, he has to win this. Um, you know, there's been a lot going on. Uh, he has been pushed and pushed up and dropped and turned and flipped. It's time LA gets a big win on a big stage. And it's got to be AJ style. I mean, what a better way? Um, AJ really doesn't have anything to prove here. LA is on a really good, strong ascension. As in my in my book, he is New Rock. I got LA Knight here. Yeah. What'd you say, okay. Chad? This is this is really really simple. It's really really straightforward. Because who I'm picking, everybody's saying L A <laughs> Night. Yeah, I like you it. know whose game this is. L.A. Night's game, man. I mean, L.A. They have like first came in, back into the WWE fold. It was a slow burn to where he got to, but once he got to, the and they traded that Max Dupree bullshit. Yes, and that rejected, and they finally. Just let him shed that crap off of him and let him be L.A. Knight, that's when you got him. And it was just sky's the limit. There. And, yeah, he didn't get the Universal Championship in the couple times he had an opportunity at it. But I think that he'll get a big win against A.J. Here's the thing. A.J. has a Hall of Fame career. He yeah. don't need the win. He don't need it. He doesn't need it. L.A. Knight needs it more than A.J. Styles because A.J. Styles' resume has a Hall of Fame hands down. Mm-hmm. When he when when he decides to retire or if they do like they did with Ray and with Paul and induct him while he's still active, he's in the Hall of Fame hands down. He don't need the win, but L.A. needs it. So it's got to be L.A. Knight. What do you think, Seth? Hit that video again, Dujene. Hit it. Ah, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let me talk to you. Yeah. Enough said. L.A. Knight. Um, as Love Champ it. said, he needs the W. A.G. Styles has a Hall of Fame career across several promotions, including WWE. He could go into the Hall of Fame next year while he's while he's still working full time in WWE, and not a single person would argue because of the career that he has had. L.A. Knight, even though he did not beat Roman, which could have ended the streak, he needs this W. Yeah. He's gonna get it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that match. Um, you know, two really good guys uh, in the ring there. This United States Championship triple threat match with Logan Paul, Randy Orton, the Viper, and KO, Kevin Owens. This one's tough because I could see Logan Paul retaining. He's done an excellent job, to be honest with you. I know a lot of people you know, may or may not like him. I will say this. Logan Paul has come in. He's taken the art of sports entertainment seriously 
He, mm -hmm. does, he has not made a mockery. He has not come in and made a joke of it. He has really elevated himself and been believable. You know what I mean? Not too many guys of his stature can come in and be believable. He has been believable. I, I almost want to say Randy's got to win this thing, but this is really a, anybody's game here. What you think? Go ahead. Uh, Smith? People aren't going to like this, but the old man's going with Logan Paul to retain. I can see that. Um, I can foresee him losing at a pay-per-view before or at SummerSlam. But no, I definitely have Logan Paul retaining here because not only is he good as champion where it comes to sports entertainment, but he promotes WWE almost every day on Impulsive. Yeah. Say what you will. There are going to be a lot of impulsive hijinks, but trust and believe there will be. We, I expect that, but I think Logan Paul retains you. Yeah, um, I, I, I like it's believable, but I don't mm -hmm. see why they take it off of him. Uh, it's not like, it's not like the feeling you get with the Judgment Day where you feel like this thing has kind of run its course. Um, yeah, I still think he's got a lot to prove there. I think even when they take the title off of him. He's still going to be in the ascension mode. Uh, I don't think it'll be anything to where people are tired of it. It's just going to be one of those things where, you know, it's time to to move on to something different. Um, and he's got to lose the, the, the title at some point. Um, but, yeah, I, I do see that as a possibility um, and the likely possibility just because of that. Uh, you know, Randy doesn't need it. Kevin doesn't need it here. Um, and they can get this title at any point in time. Uh, I, I think this probably stands with Paul here uh, with winning this and having a big WrestleMania moment where he actually wins. So uh, that's huge for him as well. I was getting ready to say, not talking about what happened on Friday night on SmackDown where and KO were in that tag match against Pretty Deadly, which Pretty Deadly won the first televised mm -hmm. win since November of 2020. Wow. It was because of Logan Paul's Randy there was creation of a dissension between them because Randy KO lost straight up before the replay showed that Logan Paul lost. So there's that there's that little bit of dissension between KO and Randy Orton. And they're gonna button heads with each other. Logan Paul's gonna take advantage of that and with it being rebels, there's no disqualification. He can use the brass knucks all he wants to, and right. it won't mean a damn thing. Logan Paul is going to retain here. Like, Janae, he doesn't need to be a U.S. champion. No. For, he's a 13 time world champion. KO is a former Universal champion and a former United, two time United States champion. Neither mm -hmm. one of these guys need the U.S. title. Logan Paul needs to enhance this hit persona that he has. So Logan Paul will retain. I know people out there are not going to like it because they don't <laughs> like the Paul brothers. Yeah. But from a wrestling standpoint, Logan Paul has brought some value to WWE. Yes. Hard to, it's really hard to say that, but it's true. He has value to WWE because he's been killing it. So Logan yeah. Paul retains. Yeah, he really has. Women's championship, Io Sky versus Bailey. I, I I see Sky retaining here. Uh, as much as I would like to see Bailey get the title, I just think that there's really been no reason, or really is no reason, to take it off of Sky. Um, as much as I was not a huge fan of hers in the beginning, um, she really has gone on and done an excellent job of being the women's champion and holding that title. Um, they've done a fantastic job of really giving her the momentum that she's had with the, even with this faction here. Um, I don't see it being coming off of her at this moment uh, because really she's still climbing that, that figurative ladder, so to speak. Imagine a paradigm shift where the Judgment Day leaves 
without gold. And you start to have damage control slip a bit where it comes to the gold. It's a possibility yeah. here. Okay. Because EOS guys had a pattern from NXT through the main roster of turning on her partners at some point. Right. Yeah. Um, it, there are three things certain in life. Death, taxes, and EO Sky turning on people. It, it just <laughs> has to be that way, okay? Um, fourth thing, you know, fourth thing, all politicians are bullshit. But anyway, all kidding aside, look, this is a complete toss-up. Right now, I'm going with Bailey to become champion. But by Friday night, I could go in front of Dujane, who's going to likely be in our chat Friday night, and go, guys, I've had a change of heart. EO wins. But right now, I'm leaning towards Bailey because Bailey just turned babyface, and she's still this badass babyface. I don't want right. to see the Bailey buddies come back or anything no. like that. But I agree with Sage. I agree with Sage. Bailey wins. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see that. Uh, it'll be a very good match. I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, both of those ladies have really uh, mm -hmm. put on a show um, and really have been, you know, some real big cornerstones in um, the women's division here. We got, uh, we got Champ back here, and as we move on to the World Heavyweight Championship. The B title. Hey, I don't get to talk about EO and Bailey. Oh, my bad, my bad. Go I don't ahead get to talk about EO and Bailey. Go ahead and take care yeah. of that real quick. I forgot. Okay, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real quick with this. Bailey wins. Yeah. Plain and simple. Bailey wins, even though she's got the odds against her with damage control against her. But I think she still wins it. And she, and not to say that she needs yeah. it, but I think it would be good to see her on top of the women's division again because she works so freaking hard and things like that i think it would be great to see her at the top of the women's division i think that you know damage control will still be on her but i think she'll have allies finally and then we'll go from there yeah. so i think eo will lose on on sunday that's uh, an interesting take and i i can't disagree with that uh this heavyweight the, the b championship as some people will say uh the heavyweight championship the world heavyweight championship is seth rollins and uh, drew mcintyre uh drew once again in a match uh that is just not gonna be fit for him to win uh i think seth retains here champ huh so i think drew wins here i think he finally breaks through he gets that big win for championship at uh, WrestleMania, because the last time he won a championship at WrestleMania, only people who saw it had to do that work. True. Mm -hmm. There was no one present. <laughs> there was no one present for his win for the WWE Championship, thanks to a certain virus. Um, and yeah. he got robbed of his true WrestleMania moment because he had to celebrate in an empty performance center. I think that he will finally get that big championship win, and he will be able to do it in front of a packed crowd in the link. Philly, even though he's a bad guy, I think that the crowd will most likely hear his win and all the sacrifice that he did, you know, leaving family behind in 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 in, in um Scotland and things like that. I think it'll all pay off for him and he'll become the new world heavyweight champion. Man, I you you kind of got me swayed now. I, I didn't even think of that one. Sith. And also there's an X factor. Although he's not cleared to, com cleared to be cleared to compete, but he'll be on commentary. I know Dijanay thinks this guy is the Antichrist, but what role could Punk play in this? Because he doesn't like either one of these dudes. He doesn't. He, uh, they don't like him. He doesn't like them. So you have to ask yourself, could Punk get involved? Or does Punk just stay his butt on commentary, acknowledge whoever wins, you know, whoever loses, whatever, talks the shit on commentary, and then everything happens. You see, Marcus says <laughs> Damien cashes in and wins. 
That is, you're getting to that stage. <laughs> I think Drew wins, but then we have a replay of the heist of the century, and then Damien beats Drew. Yeah, I can see that. At the some point, Damien's got to get a title. Two. Yeah, at some point, Damien's got to get a title, a meaningful title um, at some point. I, yeah. I'm not sure he's he hasn't shown me yet that he can carry that, but uh, we haven't seen him try either. So uh, I yeah. don't take that away from him. Uh, Dave W. I don't know if the Undertaker is going to be there. Undertaker might be at the Hall of Fame ceremony because he's yeah. a Hall of Famer, but I don't think he's going to be at WrestleMania. He might be backstage at WrestleMania, but I don't think he makes an appearance. Nah, he'll be backstage, but. From, he's doing the one man show sometime this week, and I know he'll be at the Hall of Fame. But appearing as far as being in the show goes, doubt it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That could be a possibility too. I didn't even think about mm -hmm. that. Uh, having him turn right there. Uh, we have the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Mm. Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes. I think everybody here feels like Cody is going to finish the story here. Uh, like I've said, I think Rock interferes. I don't. I don't think this is clean because they don't want to make <laughs> they don't want to make Roman look bad. Okay, going out. Um, I also, as I've kind of done my research here, so he would tie Hulk Hogan. Saturday night, he will pass Hulk Hogan Sunday night. That's why now I feel like Cody wins this with a little assistance of the people's champ, The Rock, because now he will have passed Hogan's record. There's really nothing else that he needs to do or prove, and they can move on now and start something else within the bloodline. Uh, Sith, what do you feel here? I feel that Rock will be heavily involved. But here's the catch, though. He's going to allow Solo and Jimmy to get jumped by two people that Roman fucked over in this reign as tribal chief. And that yeah. will help because Rock's not going to do anything to hurt Cody. Right. And it's going to be a lot like when Adam Page won the AW World Championship, the Bucks came to ringside and they nodded to Adam Page, like, finish the match. We're, we're not going to touch. We're not going to interfere. Get your W. Win the title. I think The Rock is going to do an homage to that to stop. There's going to be a plan in place to stop the bloodline from interfering. And you would think The Rock would get involved. He's going to stand back, nod to Cody, but like, finish your story, man. Cody wins. Champ. Nah, 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 nah. What's going to happen is it's going to come a point in the matchup where both men are down, struggling to get to their feet, and The Rock's going to come in there, and he's going to stand in the middle of the room. He's going to look, and he's going to feign like he's going to hit the rock bottom. He's going to be like this. He's going to be like this, like, waiting, waiting. Roman's going to get up and catch Roman and rock bottom his monkey ass into the box. He's going to rock I bottom into the mat. And then as soon as, as soon as that happens, he gets out of the ring. Roman's going to stumble to his feet. Two or three crossroads, and it's over. Cody Rose finishes the story. Boom. Boom. I think so. I think so. Um, as, much as, it, as much as it saddens me that, that Roman will no longer – uh, have the title. Um, I, I'm very much interested in seeing what Cody can do with carrying this title because it's going to be it's going to be huge, a huge thing for him now because the story is now done at the end of this. So what does he do next it is going to be huge in building who he is, but also building who he is within uh, the confines of the WWE. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think this is going to be a really good one. Uh, I think they've done a lot here in the last several weeks to kind of uh, sway 
uh, and give some semblance of doubt. Uh, and and I, I think this has to be it um, for for the story. And uh, he can move on. And then we'll probably get Rock and, and Roman as most of us wanted. Uh, I did not want it for the championship, though. I thought that would have been like a real big disrespect mm -hmm. uh, to Cody for sure. Um, I, I'm I'm very much excited about this whole thing. Uh, this is probably one of the better WrestleMania cards that we've seen in. Whew, it's been a bit. And I hate to say that because we've had some good ones, but man, I have this a fear is though. Good. I have a fear though. I have a fear yeah. though. The last two wrestle, well, the last couple of WrestleManias since they've gone to a two night format back in 2020, we have seen WrestleMania have a very strong Saturday night, but then have a subpar ass Sunday night. You and are that's my fear. That. that that's my fear. This of uh, with this card here is that Saturday night is so so stacked. And Sunday isn't as stacked as Saturday, but it's still stacked. That I fear that Saturday is going to be the most awesome night ever, and then Sunday just not going to measure up. It could be possibly subpar. And that's a fear that I've had because it's happened the last two years in a row. And, mm -hmm. you know, I would hate for that to happen. And I think that if WWE decides to not pull the trigger – and they decide that Cody's not going to finish the story. That's all people are going to talk about for WrestleMania Sunday is that Cody wants to get the story. It's not going to matter if Logan Paul retained the U.S. championship. It's not going to matter that L.A. Knight beat AJ Styles. It's not going to matter if he wins the uh, women's championship. It's not going to matter about none of that. If Roman Reigns retains on Sunday, that's all everybody's going to talk about. Yeah. But I I'll say this, go though. On, man. Go, go ahead. Go, Jay. You good person on that. My thing is, is this. I a lot of people complain, and I'm gonna go with the rock, uh, Cody Crybabies complain, but how many times did Roman have to continue to get beat by stinking Brock Lesnar, who showed up for a couple months, didn't even wrestle the whole entire time, and continue to get beat by this guy before he had he got over the hump. I, I could see it being the exact same way here. I don't know why it has to be so different for Cody, you know, with with all of this losing. Um, you know, there were times we thought, okay, this time Roman's going to win this thing. It, it's definitely going to happen, and it doesn't. And everybody's like, oh, well, you know, it should be different for Cody. Absolutely not. I mean, if he wins, great. I'm happy. If he doesn't, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Look at all the other people who had to go through that nonsense. Seth, what, what's your thoughts? Okay. The city of Philadelphia, the fans there are extremely hardcore and fanatical. If Roman wins, I'm glad we're not going to be at the link. Because oh, it's yeah. going to be ugly. Oh, it's going to be ugly. It's okay. going to be ugly. <laughs> it, it's going to be ugly. And Donnie Wrestling, our own Donnie Wrestling, is going to be there at the link. It's going to be beat up Santa Claus ugly. Yes. It's going to be <laughs> Roman is a New York Rangers or New Jersey Devils or New York Islanders hockey player. And the city of Philly is going to want to beat him down. They're going to have to fly a helicopter and drop a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have to get on set ladder and be pulled from the link that way. He ain't yeah. walking out. He ain't walking yeah. out nowhere. <laughs> Not <laughs> at all. There ain't, nope. ain't no way. Like he wins. He's got. He needs arm. He needs arm security to get out of the link. Dead ass. Even yeah. though the link has their own jail, ain't going that jail. <laughs> that jail ain't about to hold seventy thousand people at once. Ain't happening. Nah. Nope. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Uh, I love it. To be Donnie's gonna go wait for I, I'm hoping that this is over, to be honest. And I, like I said, yeah. I am I am a huge Roman fan. I what had that he has done is just absolutely incredible. But I think it's time now. Um, and because it, it doesn't have to end here with Roman, he just won't have the title. It doesn't have to end here. 
Um, there's still mm-hmm. some things going on that could still be uh, a part of the bloodline where he, he does uh, actually go and, and try to get a rematch here and didn't lose as cleanly. Uh, I think that has to happen at some point. It happens to all of our great, uh, you know, wrestlers that eventually mm-hmm. they lose cleanly. And, you know, I, I think at some point Roman's going to decide that he has nothing else left to prove and he will walk away. Uh, and rightfully so. Um, but again, like I said, those people are like, oh, it, it has to happen. Like, oh, my God. Like, no, because Roman went through hell trying to get that daggone title from mm-hmm. Brock Lesnar. So, uh, you know, I, yeah. I, it, it yes, but it will be a riot. And I don't think the city of Philly can handle that at all. It, it will no. it will not be good. <laughs> it will not be good. I don't think H has any type of security plan in the world uh, to help that situation. <laughs> uh, you guys tell everybody before we get out of here uh, what you guys have coming up and uh, let everybody know where they can kind of come in and be a part of what you guys do so well uh, on the, uh, you know, reaction uh, shows that you guys do during these pay-per-views. I got this, Seth. So, uh, know that we are on Twitch, Twitch, TV slash True No Spots Pod, where we do stream our recording of our weekly wrestling podcast. We also do podcasts for New Japan, which is age mentioned in, our, in the Facebook stream. Uh, we will be streaming the uh, episode this week, upcoming week's episode, where we will be previewing WrestleMania and giving our official picks for WrestleMania, as well as NXT Stand and Deliver this coming Friday night, uh, with the audio going up on Saturday. On all uh, on Spotify and Amazon Music and wherever else you get your play, uh, your podcast from, uh, we will also be doing live stream reactions to Stand and Deliver and both nights of WrestleMania on Twitch with myself and Sip doing Stand and Deliver and WrestleMania Saturday, and then myself, Sip, and Sage for WrestleMania Sunday. So again, make sure you check us out at twitch.tv slash true no spots pod and also make sure you check out the old man on social media at true sip 74 on both twitter and on tiktok man they're gonna have some great stuff this weekend um as they always do so uh, make sure you guys get locked in fellas i'm looking forward to wrestlemania thank you guys for dropping in and uh we'll do this again sometime absolutely, absolutely. thank you for having thanks. us thanks for having us bro Yes, sir. That's Champ and the Sith. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to WrestleMania. We're going to have a blast, uh, and they will make it even better. Make sure you guys lock in. Um, It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, I will close the show with a little drag racing here info. Um, As you have noticed, we have had groups of people stand on the starting line. Uh, now, these people may be of said sponsorship. Um, in the rule book, even people who work are not allowed to stand as close as some of these people are standing. And I think it's a, a recipe for disaster. All it takes is for one motor to grenade before whacking the throttle. And there are going to be pieces all over, folks, and all the wrong reasons. We can simply avoid this by following the rules, standing behind the willy bar, not up next to the car by the pipes. That is way too close. We don't even. There are people that warn fans of standing in the direction of the pipes during warm-ups in the pit. So let's try to fix that. Let's not waste the asshole. Someone get hurt. We take that doesn't need to be that way. Thank you so much for watching the show. We went long, but it is a special edition of this show as we talked about WrestleMania. We had Richard Gaston on. It's going to be a heck of a podcast. Lock in. I'm excited. I know you guys have to in. Like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, thank you guys. Bland Show, powered by SportsJourney.com and everything Nitro. I'm Tuesday Bland, and we're out of here.